Welcome everyone to part two of the Service Mapping Art of the Possible series. I'm Bill Iflin, Product Success Technical Director, and I'm thrilled to guide you through this next method of service mapping. Today we'll focus on the manual approach to populate and represent the MediaWiki production application service. Before we proceed, let's take a quick look at our safe harbor notice. Here's the agenda for today's session. Again, we'll review the MediaWiki CIs, followed by a overview of the technical and practical aspects of manual mapping, as well as approach for implementing such service maps. And then I will bring it all together in a live demo. Let's start revisiting the CIs for MediaWiki. With our focus on the production stack, we have five Linux servers and three application classes or three patient types that are running on those servers. For the sake of our demonstration today, I'm only going to be focusing on five Linux servers and recreating the architecture manually. Recall that the class of application service determines its method. Manual services are best fit for small applications or applications where you have manually entered the CIs and they rarely change, for example, the mainframe. Some quick technical aspects about manual services. They are stored in the same class as mapped services, but they have a crucial difference, and that is the service type of value one created manually. This kind of application service does not require a plugin. When mapping, we're not just limited to process or application CIs that normally are seen and brought in by top-down discovery. We can bring in any kind of CI type that we choose. Top-level CIs on the map behave like manual entry points. We identify the CI just like we would an endpoint for top-down then we would use the canvas and add the remaining CIs. All CIs on the canvas or on the service map are connected with manual endpoints. And for advanced functionality, when you're using the updated with changes from CMDB, it's a good idea to look at the manual CI inclusion exclusion table to ensure that you only bring in CIs of the desired class. This table is not found on the left nav. When implementing such service maps, consider how they're well suited. They're well suited for services that you want to quickly visualize and get immediate value. And bring in topology that represents out of box or a user defined topology. When we say built manually, we're using the service mapping UI to do this. We add the entry point as manually created, and then we add the CIs from node to node. And then if we do further desire, we can do update with changes from the CMDB to bring in extra relational data that was found during horizontal discovery. Some considerations though, you wouldn't wanna do this for services that are changing rapidly. For example, containers, perhaps back to the mainframe environment that's pretty stable and static, you would pull that in or for configuration items that were manually entered into the CMDB and you cannot identify them through any other means. Just remember that any class can be visualized on a map, so it may or may not have the parity that you seek with a top-down discovered application service. Always review that manual CI inclusion exclusions before you begin using the update with changes from CMDB. And because they are manual, they do require manual intervention to update. So when servers are evergreen or replaced, you would have to go in and manually update the service. Just like dynamic CI groups, there is a dependency on a discovery source. Here I'm depending on IP-based discovery to bring in the servers and the running application. The method that we're going to do today is we're going to review or re recall the architecture where we have a load balancer front-ending three Apache web servers connecting to a database server. And we're going to leverage our naming convention while we're searching for the CIs, as well as the operational status and 
it's used for attribute. Again, you add the CIs via the user interface under the mapped application services class. Now let's move into the IFI instance to see manual mapping in action. Here in the IFI instance, I have pulled up the service operations workspace looking at the manual service. Now that we're using CI classes from the CMDB CI service discovered class, there's actually three ways that you can look at the data in the service now. You can look at it directly from the class. And this has your standard form, sections, and related lists. Here you'll notice that the entry points are listed as a related list. For some of those that have been around for a while, this was the way you used to add entry points to an application service. With the new interface that was introduced around, I believe, New York, we now have a UI page where you can navigate and do the management of the manual map. Instead of having a related list for the entry point, entry points are managed over here in this left nav. The last function or the last way to look at an application service inside ServiceNow is through the CSDM Managed Technical Interface. This is a wizard that allows you to create your application services and build the CSDM relationships, followed by selecting a population method to build that service. Here, because I've already started as a manual, I'm only allowed to add additional manual items or put an entry point in to do top down. Also notice that this entry point, rather manual CI that I'm using as my top level CI has parity or looks the same as if I clicked it here. It has a class and a CI name. Class and a CI name. So let's look at the map that was produced. This was done manually. This entry point was actually added as a part of the entry points here. To do that, add it as an entry point and choose manually created and select the CI type or class and then choose its name. And I chose it using the similar criteria we used in our dynamic CI groups. Pick the operational status, and I only want production. And in this case, I also want to just focus on the servers that are have been built as a part of my MediaWiki application service. So I will leverage the naming convention. Here, I want to start with my load balancer server CI. After updating the map, then I would view it. And the top level CI is going to be that entry point. To further build out the service map, it's a simple painting exercise. I highlight the CI that I want, extend my map from, add a CI, and go through a similar exercise, Linux server. And I already knew that my server naming convention was LMWAPP. And from that, I can choose the servers. And I know that my production ones do not have a D in it. It is simple as that, clicking add. And to connect the database, I had to do that three 
separate times to the database server. After the service is recomputed, we will find all the CIs for that service in the Service Configuration Item Association table, also known as SVC CI SOC. Here, for the production manual service, notice we only have the servers that were on the canvas, manual endpoints that connected each one of those, as well as the service name itself. This completes the manual application service mapping demo. Thank you for joining me today. See you soon in part three.